Hey Game Makers! Welcome back to another devlog for GM2 Echoed Memories. And I'm happy to report we finished Chapter 3! Woohoo! I started work on Chapter 4 the other day, but pretty much all I have are the maps done and a couple NPCs written. Uh, as far as Chapter 3 goes, I'm really happy about it, because it doesn't have 10 million cutscenes. Um, okay, Chapter 2. I mentioned that this is in the last devlog. But chapter two is um, very, very cutscene heavy, and to the point where I've got like, I'm gonna guess maybe six extra cutscenes that are like optional. Um, so I was very, very happy that this one doesn't have too many cutscenes. It's pretty much a straightforward, go do the plot here and then come back sort of thing. Um, it does have a bunch of cutscenes, uh, it has a couple cutscenes in it, but they aren't like huge, big, emotionally driven cutscenes that you end up feeling like, oh my gosh, I just want to give that character a hug. Except maybe Kazumi, she's more of a focal character in, in this chapter, but um, I was really happy about that. Uh, chapter 3 isn't voiced yet, um, it's... I, I didn't feel like doing it, so I just proceeded with chapter 4. Um, as far as uh, chapter two, last time I said I hadn't gotten the monsters or the voicing done. The voicing's done for chapter two. Uh, the monsters, yeah, the monsters are done and they're studded and everything works. And I tested that and I'm happy about it. <laughs> um, as far as chapter three goes, the one I just finished, uh, I don't know, there's, there, oh, there's, ah, uh, okay. Um, oh, okay, this, 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 this might be fun to talk about. I have this area where you go through the doors, and then you go through some more doors, and you have to kind of pick the pattern of the doors to get through. And like a genius, I'm like, let's do this all in doodads, because that'll be fun. <laughs> Pain in the butt. <laughs> um, for future reference, when you go through this area, it's uh, pretty straightforward, but you follow where the doll is, or the angel thing and you go through that door. Um, do I still have? No, I don't. Uh, what is the switch? Okay, so 92. Uh, I think is the switch number. Somewhere there. Oh, wait, I saw it, I saw it! Uh, here. Okay, so any of these will do. <laughs> Essentially, I'm controlling these with switches because I can't use variables with doodads. And I decided, oh, yeah, I'll just use events to X out where these are supposed to be, because that'll be great. Pain in the butt. D don't, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I wanted to save on having to repeat the map four times, but... Ugh. Just... Ugh. Uh, actually, let's just run through here. Um, let's just turn on four and then run through here. <laughs> um... Happy sounding music for a creepy looking area. Sounds great. Uh, oh good, that does sort of work. Haven't tested that with all the characters yet. So I actually needed specific characters in my party for this. I forgot. So we're uh, gonna actually turn the music and do this right. So I, for this area, had to do a wall boss. And in the original game, that didn't work very well. Luckily, for this one, it was actually really, really easy and I'm super, super okay with how it turned out. Uh, you learn a skill here, I haven't put that in yet. Um, so we're just gonna attack the crap out of it. Uh, normally that, um, I think it was Akira ran under the, the, the dude? Uh, normally that wouldn't happen, I have a thing set at the beginning of the game, I just don't have it set here for some reason. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the boss moves towards you and it's great, a la wall boss. But it was really easy, actually, because of the way I already have everything set up and Kazumi's gonna die, because Kazumi always dies. Um, essentially, for the characters walking around the screen like I have, I have a boundary box set that says you can't walk up X, Y this high and, you know, far to the side. So instead of trying to move the, the boss manually or making multiple copies of the boss, which is I think what I did in, in GM2, in this I actually just move for, for, for every um, action that the characters take or that the enemy takes, because I already had a thing set up to do that, uh, it actually just pushes the boundary down by 10. 
so the monster, along with the boundary, because the, the characters can't go past where the boundary is, gets pushed over. And then it's just a little, if monster gets to this coordinate, then explode, or whatever. Uh, good thing I have him set to invincible, because I actually thought I had him set to 1 HP. Oh yeah, and then I die. A little over dramatic, and I'm probably gonna change that. And why is that still doing that? <laughs> uh, well, okay, we're we're very very dead. <laughs> uh, I think I had changed something at the end of that and haven't tested it yet, but I don't remember what exactly. Anyway, so yeah, wall boss. If he was at one HP, he'd be dead. It'd be great. <laughs> So that's pretty much the, the exciting part of, um, chapter three. Now, there's something I actually want your guys' help with, because your guys' is how I talk, <laughs> I guess, um, with, with chapter four. See, the school areas in my game, which this is, are, um, <sighs> they're filled with NPCs that like to talk with referencing, references to other stuff, and just little comedic things like that. Um, but... The problem with this game specifically is all of my references are either really stupid or really outdated. So I'd actually like to ask you guys if you would like to have an NPC in here. Now I'm just going to use the, the sprites that I already have made up or whatnot, but if you would like an NPC with your name and some funny dialogue you can come up with, uh, send me a tweet uh, at Echo607 on Twitter with the hashtag, let's see, echoed NPC. Yeah, I know, not as amazing as it sounds, but um, I was a, I was originally gonna do this as a Patreon only thing, but I realized just how many of my NPCs were really stupid. Like, um, um, I will show you actually a comparison because I've implemented all of the NPCs that I liked and left out the ones that sucked. So, I think it was right, right up. Mm, actually, I think it was just right. Okay, so there is one NPC on here. On this game, there is... I wish I could move this to the right more. There we go. Uh, there, there is substantially more than that, because there's one here, and there's one here. Okay, maybe not substantially. These guys also got taken out. And I think this is just a blockade that says, You shall not pass until the plot demands so. Um, but yeah, a lot of the NPCs are either stupid or outdated in terms of, you know, funny. Um, so yes, if you would like an NPC, I am more than happy- more than happying to, uh, add it in. And, of course, I will give you credit. I'll credit you in the, uh, the credits. <laughs> uh, that's where you put those. So, yeah, if you are interested, just do that thing that I said a minute ago and I'm still rambling on about for some reason. Um, something I also mentioned in the last devlog is trying to get my preloaders pre to work. Preloaders to work. Um... I pretty much got them to work. I was having an issue with my preloading specific events because it was trying to preload the music and then every scene after that would just hang for some reason. So I stopped the music from being cached in the one plugin and everything seems to work. Like I haven't had any hanging, so that's good. Um, now something I really, really, really think is gonna be fun to talk about. Uh, let's just go on a map. Let's go on one of the new maps. Um, Wow, why is that scrolling so slow? Oh yeah, I'm doing the same thing for um, the these maps, the uh, the room ones that I did with the Merrick maps, where everything's by a switch and we'll just put things where they need to go, so I don't have to make multiple copies of the same map. Because when you're doing parallaxes, that will just bloat the file size and make me have to input more data than I have to. <laughs> um. Sure, let's go here. Because I don't think there's anything playing on this map in terms of music, so I don't need to worry about that.
There you go. So something I've mentioned several times previously is my options menu and how I kept getting so many options added to it that um, it was becoming an issue. Hey, kids, your, your hair's blowing inside. Um, but I've upgraded since to Yonfly's option menu, which is awesome! Um, so I'm gonna spend a minute to go through a little bit of that. Uh, this is actually a plugin I wanted to do a tutorial on, but there is a lot of code I want to throw at you, and I'm still kind of working out how I'm gonna make that not just sound like, and we're going to do this, and it's going to make sense somehow. <laughs> um, so I guess let's just go down all. Uh, so we've got the audio settings, which with the plugin adds in the master volume thing, I think. Um, the world map settings, uh, this will only show up if you're me, <laughs> or if you beat the game and beat the epilogue quest, then this will become available. Um, then the options for, for the marker stuffs. I'm still not sold on this, I want to do it better. I'm thinking I actually have a picture show up over the character at like picture 100, that way it won't be hidden by anything, I think. Yeah, yeah, a picture would be over everything. So that's what I'm thinking of doing for that, it's not done yet. But then the minimap stuff, which is pretty standard. Um, yeah, I guess these were my only two minimap things. Um, again, minimaps like in the previous game, you'll find places. I'm... Uh, actually, I think... No, no, find is the right word. You only get given like... Do you get given any of them? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, I don't remember. Um, difficulty and encounter rate, they're a toggleable thing. Uh, I'll probably put descriptions on what these actually mean. This one's different, but um, yeah. This is still based on how I was doing it before because difficulty things, it, it, it's fine how it is for the time being. Uh, help is on. Uh, I also had an option for smooth strolling. Now, um, I. Yeah, okay, I ran around earlier, but you probably didn't notice the smooth scrolling because I actually have the plugin off, because when I have the plugin on and I'm using doodads, the universe wants to break. So, it's off for now. The plugin itself is off. But, um, I decided to make it toggleable because I was already using that anyway, because the, um, because, 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 uh, Mode 7, the Mode 7 plugin I'm using, has uh, an issue with the smooth scrolling smooth scrolling plugin that I'm using. And for that reason, I decided to implement a switch in which I can just turn it off and make it work. I don't know what accent that was. <laughs> um, that was Echo. That was just the language of Echo. Anyway, so because I was already doing that, I have it set to turn on and off, because the only time where it would be an issue is a place where the player isn't going to have control anyway. So, that's an option now. Um, auto save, auto run, this is just all the auto stuff. Uh, game performance, these are still the same from the previous game. I forget if I've added in anything to help with that. I haven't had too many issues, honestly, in this one. It hasn't really been an issue. I had one issue in... Eon on my crap computer. <laughs> uh, let's go with crap top there. Um, but I've implemented a, a roundabout way of fixing that for that specific area since it's happened consistently on that computer. So that should be fine. Um, and that's even like I, I'm, I've got a lot of excess things going just for debugging. It's it's it. I don't think is going to be as much of a problem. Um, Cutscene volume. This will probably end up having a number besides just on or off. This was just one of the first things I worked on and I didn't know how to do that at the time. This was very much a learning process. I am not as familiar as I should be with Evol and um, stuff like this. Um, voices, auto skip. These will turn each other on and off because uh, if you have auto text skip on and voices off, the universe will just break. <laughs> Uh, your text will just skip and and want to keep skipping. Um, this is still toggleable uh, in the middle of cutscenes, so that's not an issue. Oh, um, I don't have any cutscenes here. I'll get back to that in a sec, uh, if I remember. Um, 
I also added classic mode for people who don't like faces and people who don't like my anime scenes, and disable blur is just here because I know it runs terribly on some people's computers for some reason now. First game works fine, this one not so much. Um, but yeah, it'll just stop face graphics from showing up if this is on. I have to, for these, because their they're default features have already implemented, it was sort of a reverse thing, so I had to put disable, disable, and disable on here. But, um, yeah, so if you have these on, face graphics won't show, and the anime scenes also won't show. It'll still progress with the scene with the uh, text box window at the bottom, but um, the characters just won't show up. And I've got a really easy way of doing that. It's not fully implemented right now because I'm using it for something else, a la my test folder. But that's how that'll be done. And uh, this also turns off blur if disable is on because otherwise the cutscenes would just blur. Uh, I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. Um, this is just uh, Yonfly color window stuff, it's cool. Um, window transition, default or fade, fades the thing I implemented, it's nice. This, is, this was fun, this was fun. I'm proud of this one. So I had to figure out how to use plugin commands in this. And I had a lot of help for this entire plugin from Valencia Games and Selenifo, since they're way smarter with code than I am. Um, but I actually got it to insta show my window skin changes, and I thought that was so cool. <laughs> um, I believe I'm going to still have collectible window skins because I really enjoyed that from the first game. Uh, I don't have any of them made, so these are the only ones that are available. I'm gonna have to go and tamper with the code to add the new ones if they're available. It's gonna be a pain, but that's the plan for that. Uh, let's go to the, actually, dark window skin. And you can just kind of see in the back, too, because it's only half transparent. Uh, then keyboard config. This, uh... Hold on. I can actually... Maybe? Oh, my controller's not plugged in. Well, had I had a controller plugged in, this uh, would be showing up a controller config too. This is also a Yonfly thing. Uh, I'm actually using a different bind thing for the keyboard, so it uh, it doesn't like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to work that out a bit more. Um, I've also noticed the ones that directly open different scenes, um, if you're dealing with another plugin that will do that, it will actually reset your location, which makes sense because it's opening a brand new scene, but... And then submit a bug report. Um, a little thing I wanted to point out, because I've noticed this while I was testing this, is actually GMEM's uh, bug report page doesn't want to show up anymore. I think I have this set to go to, like, Google right now. Let's see. Uh, maybe I just don't have it set up. Um, but normally that would take you to my bug report page. Uh, except the website doesn't seem to want to work with this anymore. It should just load it, and it works if I just go to the link, so I don't know why that's not working. But, <clears throat> excuse me, um, if that still is an issue by the time many years from now that this game gets finished, uh, I will just go to a different site to do the bug thing. Um, anyway, so that's my options menu, and I'm super happy with it. Um, yeah, I want to do a tutorial on it. I've actually got this list of things I want to do videos on. <laughs> um, but I just haven't gotten to it yet because I have stuff to do. And yeah, but... Uh, which... Options Core. So Options Core is actually really cool. Maybe I'll give you a little tutorial right here. Um, so you got this, right? And then you go into like a subfolder of it. And then you go into a subfolder of that, and I really wish these would like stack one below so you can see how many windows you have open, but whatevs, that's fine. Um, and then you have the, uh, uh, how do I do words? Um, <laughs> uh, the symbol, which is essentially how you define the word, I deserved it. This is how you interact with whatever you want it to do, sort of thing. So then you'd go down here, and you'd have, like, what it does. And I, I, I can't explain things on the fly, not in this much detail. Um, or without actually being able to see my screen, because I'm sitting a little farther away than I should. Um, what's an easy one? One of these with switches. Except markers. So, I've got a switch with 
an evil code evil code that's labeled with exit marker, just the word. Um let's see it. Exit. Exert! Uh, is it up here? Is that why? Yes, because I was like one below it. So in the switch or variable or what have you, with the evil codes, um, that you want to use, you name it with this. Okay. Uh, can I open this? Will it break? Okay. And this is the name of how you'll uh, use the switch. After you do this, you can't actually, to my understanding, turn on and off the switch normally. It will show like it's on and off, but the game will still register it based on where you use this. Um. So we have that set to exit markers, and oh my god, how big is this? Whoa, that was weird. I have two screens open most of the time. Um, anywho, uh, so with that, this isn't going to be a tutorial in which you can actually learn things from what I'm doing now. I'm just looking at it and talking about it, because why not? Okay, so exit markers. Um, for me specifically, I'm not using press OK because I don't plan on using the touch features and having to toggle between left and right with a click just seems weird if you're not using touch controls. Um, I'm using it for things where you do need to click them, but for this I'm not. Anyway, so then I think this is all pretty much stuff you can copy from the default. It's just a is switch on yes no sort of thing. Um, or rather displaying that and then changing it. If you want to update other things, then you need to do a little more work with this. Um, and then just what happens if you click left and right, which are these two. Uh, these two. Um, which is this. Turn the symbol, which is exit markers, the name, on or off. So false to turn it off, and when you hit left, it turns it on. Not really overly complicated after you know what you're doing. <laughs> um, this is why I write things down for tutorials and read off a script I've made, because I can't do this, like, just on the fly. And these are just, um, what you have them set to default on, uh, well, the default, and what you want it set to for load and save, or something to that effect. Um, anyway, I want to do a tutorial on that, because... I was looking around and I couldn't really find anything. Uh, I watched Dion Fly's video and then was like, huh, but how do I do this, this, and this? So then I asked Salia and Valencia and they're like, oh, well, here's some things to get you started. And it's like, oh, thank you. That's great. Um, so that was really confusing. And I was like pulling my hair out because I, for me, what the main issue is, is I don't know a lot of the specific codes to use for things. Uh, if I do a tutorial, it's going to be geared towards people that want to get things done, but probably don't have a full understanding of how to do it. Um, which, you should learn how to do things to some extent. Uh, I, luckily, I have people in my life that can help me with things when I get stuck and teach me how to do things. I know a lot more about it now that they help me with it. So if I come across, like, I, I can just enter things on my own without them even needing to be like, oh, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so that's, that's great. I think that's all for now. So I'm going to wrap things up, and I'll be posting the second half of this later. And I will see you next time, gamers.